Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to be showing you how to get started in Premiere Pro. So in this video, I will be teaching you just tips and tricks on how to begin your editing process. Uh, before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you are enjoying this content, be sure to like this video too. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we are going to open up our Premiere Pro. I am working on the 2020 version. To start a new project, you're going to click Create New Project. I'm going to call this Tutorial. And in Location, you want to save it to the external hard drive or the desktop folder where you have this project living and press OK. And now we're going to begin importing our project. But before we start that, we're gonna go over to uh, where it says import media to start and create some bins. It's always best to stay organized um, and creating bins to kind of organize all of your different media is gonna help you in your editing process. So I'm gonna click on this little bin here and title this footage. Another way you can create a bin is by right clicking, click new bin, and you can add as many bins as you want uh, for what's needed for the project that you're working on. Okay, so now once you've made uh, the right amount of bins for your project, you're gonna double click on footage, right click, import, locate the footage that you wanna work on, and import them all into that bin. Beautiful. So you can see that it is imported in a list view. You can see the icon for the list view here. If you click at this icon view, you can see all of your footage in there as a little thumbnail icon. It's uh, not imported in numerical order. I do want to fix that. So I'm going to click on the icon called sort icons and I'm going to sort it by name. And now all of that footage is imported in order how I shot it that day. Okay, so before we start editing, we still have one more thing to do. We are going to start our sequences. Um, sequences are also called a timeline and that is kind of where you're going to be playing around and creating your movie. So you can do it a couple of different ways. You can drag and drop some footage straight into the timeline workspace. And you can see it's created a timeline specifically uh, in accordance to how that film or that clip was shot. So I'm going to call this tutorial one and I'm going to re-import that by dragging and dropping it into sequence. So you can see it's right here in my sequence bin. Um, I actually like to create my sequences individually um, by going into File, New, Sequence, and I like to choose DSLR 180p 24 frames. So even though I'm shooting in 60 frames, I like to export my movies in 24. So that's why I do it this way. I'm gonna call this sequence Tutorial 2. Okay, so now that we have imported footage and created sequences, AKA our timelines, let's go into how we start pulling those clips and editing those clips on our timeline. I'm going to now look at all of my footage in icon view. Uh, what you can do is you can actually scrub through the footage in icon view so you can see what it actually is. I'm going to start picking a clip and mute, uh, mute this volume really quick. Um, so what you can do is from this clip you can actually click on the entire image and pull that clip. Yes, I want to keep existing settings. Um, we're going to pull that clip onto the timeline. The whole thing goes there. Um, or you can decide what your starting point is. I want to start here and create a reveal. You're going to click on I for input. 
scrub to where you want that clip to end, click O for output, and now you can see it only pulled the part that you wanted to edit with. You have this nice tight clip versus the entire lengthy clip. So if you only wanted to pull the video, you're going to look at this little icon with a film strip and you're just going to drag and drop that. So you can see it only gives you the video. Now if you did want to pull the audio, say it's a clip of the girls like cheersing and you want to hear some natural sound from that, um, you're going to pull this little audio icon and drag and drop that on the audio portion of your timeline. So up here you can see V1, V2, V3. These are all of your video channels that you're going to be working with within this uh, workspace of this timeline. A1, A2, A3 are going to be all of your audio channels that you're going to be working within your timeline. All right, awesome. So now that we've kind of gone over um, how to pull the clips, let's dive into how we're going to edit them. You can see here, here are some editing tools. You've got select, uh, track forward, ripple, razor tool, the slip tool, pen tool. Um, you can definitely start using these, but what's going to make your editing process so much faster is if you learn the keyboard shortcuts. So really quick, how you can locate those keyboard shortcuts is go into um, Premiere Pro, head over to Keyboard Shortcuts, click on that. You can customize your shortcuts here, um, or you can see what some of the default settings are. So for your uh, razor tool, it's going to be the C. Selection tool is going to be the V. Ripple tool is going to be B. Uh, you definitely want to know that the space is going to stop and start your footage. So when you're kind of scrubbing through or watching your footage, that's what you can click. Uh, your pen tool to help change the audio is P. Um, o for mark out, I for mark in. Those are going to be like the essential things you want to start getting really familiar with. Okay, so I'm going to really quickly pull some clips to start editing. Okay, so I used my my in and outs to pull the selection of the clip that I wanted. And then I just brought this B-roll down by clicking on this film icon, bringing it straight down to my timeline. So as you can see, it's not totally perfect. We've got the hand coming there, hand coming there. We can definitely make that tighter. Aw, so cute. So with this shot in particular, you can approach this one or two ways. We can see that it ends where he's starting to turn he hasn't turned here. So you can, oh, also the plus will allow you to zoom into your timeline. The minus button will pull you back out so you can see it as a whole again. So I'm going to zoom into my timeline by pressing the plus button. You can either take the cut tool. So uh, C activates the blade, cut that shot, delete what you don't want. I just clicked on the empty space to highlight it and pressed delete to push it all together. So let's see how that flows. Much better. It could probably still be a little bit tighter. So now I'm going to kind of tab over to where I want the turn to happen. I think right there looks good. So I moved those keys by pressing the arrows. So I shifted to the right slightly by pressing the arrows. Now I'm gonna press B, which is your ripple tool. And I'm gonna just continue to trim there and it'll already kind of mo move those clips closer together without me having to go through the process of selecting and deleting. So now by pressing the space, you can see how that clip moves together. Looks a lot more natural.
If you wanted to move these clips around, you want to make sure to press V again so you can select each clip and move them around. Um, okay, the pen tool. So let's drag this audio back down. And if we zoom in, pressing the plus button, I want to expand on this audio a little bit more. So I'm going to go to this column here and just drag it down. So now you can see those audio wavelengths a lot better. If you wanted to manipulate this audio, you're going to press the P for pen tool, create the points where you want to make an effect on that audio, and just drag and pull and manipulate it as needed. So I'm just going to delete this audio here because we're not going to be working with it, but that's just to show you the example. Um, so that goes over spacebar, V, C, B, P. Some of the most uh, common things you need to know getting started in editing. Uh, if you wanted to add some transitions to your timeline project, uh, you can go over into your project bins here. You can see there is a tab called Effects. Um, if you don't see it, click on this little arrow and it will populate them here for you so you could click on it. So you can go into Video Transitions. There's also Video Effects. Um, but video transitions, click on the one that makes the most sense to you. For examples, uh, for the sake of this example, I'm going to pull cross dissolve over so you can kind of see how that'll then blend the two shots together. And to mess around with that more, we're going to zoom in, click on the cross dissolve, and you can expand the cross dissolve to make it longer. You can shorten it if you want it to be really quick. You can see that was it short. And this is it long. So romantic. Okay, so to work with each clip a little bit more, you want to, with your selection tool, so make sure you're in V, you're going to click on that clip. And in this viewing panel here, you're going to click on effect controls. And you can see you have the ability to work with this footage a little bit more. So if you wanted to make that shot even tighter, zoom in a little bit more, you can go ahead and scale it. So let's say I want to scale it to 140. Uh, you can move the positioning. So that could be a little bit more centered, a little bit more off-centered, whatever looks and feels right to you. You can change the opacity of it. So that works nicely if you were to move it on top of the clip. So you can kind of see how they're both there on top. You want to mess with that a little bit more. Let's see. We are going to put that screen so you can kind of see how it's kind of created a double exposure effect. Um, so that was for example's sake. I'm going to click on Command Z, which is going to undo those edits that I've made. So that's another one that you want to keep in your editing back pocket. So you can probably do Command Z up to like 15-ish times. Don't quote me on that number. At some point, it can't go back. Um, but if you've made a couple mistakes or you've decided, eh, I don't want that edit after all, click on Command Z and it'll get you back to where you started. Okay, so those are all of the beginner keys you need to know just to get started on your video edit. Uh, to really level it up from there, I'm going to show you how you can color grade and color correct your footage using um, the color panel that they have in your workspace on Premiere. All right, so to begin the color correcting and color grading process, I want you to be aware of all these different workspaces on the top of Premiere. So you see learning, assembly, editing, color, effects, yada, yada, yada. Um, make sure you pay attention to color because this is where you're going to be working in. So when you are ready to start doing the color correction first, you're going to make sure your selection tool is selected. So click on V, make sure that's activated, and click on the clip that you want to be working with. Go ahead and click over to color. 
and you can see you've got a column here for basic correction. You could work with the curves, color wheels, HSL secondary, vignette. Um, you're mostly going to be working in basic correction and curves and I mean maybe color wheels, HSL secondary, it just depends on how technical you want to get here. Um, for this, I want you to start off with just getting familiar with basic correction. So here you can bring up the exposure a little, make it a little more contrasty. If you wanted to do some color correcting with the temperature or the tint, you have those panels here. There's saturation, really boost the colors. Um, and then you can do that so on and so forth for the rest of your clips. Okay, so once you have all of that how you like it, click back over to the editing workspace. Make sure your project box is highlighted. We're going to add an adjustment layer for the color grading. So you can do that by doing File, New, Adjustment Layer. Or you can click on New Item, Adjustment Layer. Going to rename that color so I know exactly what that one is. And clicking on color, we're gonna then click on the color workspace at the top, go into creative, and we're going to import a preset called a LUT. So for videos, those presets are called LUTs. They're kind of like, you can imagine them as filters. Um, I have some that I've already purchased. So from here, creative, you're gonna go into look, browse, and I have some from Illum. I'm just gonna go with Illum Boost and see what happens there. Beautiful, I'm gonna bring that intensity down. So here you can kind of decide how intense you want that to be. I'm gonna bring it to like 70. And now that has been applied to my entire video. So nice. So if we want to hide that and kind of see the before and after, on the left here, on your timeline, you can see there's a little eye icon. If you click on that to disable it, it's going to hide that, um, what is this called again? That line, that layer. There we go. It's going to hide that layer. Something to note about layers is you remember how there's V1, V2, V3, you can actually Create as many layers as you need to in here, and it'll just keep building up and up. And just to kind of look at some of the other features in this color wheel. So again, you wanna make sure the clip that you have highlighted is what you're going to be working with. Let's tab over to Curves. You wanna make three points for your midtones, shadows, and highlights. And you can see that the midtone point is going to be manipulating like the skin tones a little bit more, bringing those highlights down. This bottom one's gonna work with the shadows. This top one's gonna work with the highlights. Definitely play around with your footage and see what coloring looks best for your brand and your style. And this is super fun. Coloring is very time consuming, but a very exciting part of the editing process. Also, don't forget to often click on Command S. That is going to save your project. You can kind of see a couple times over that the Premiere Pro has auto-saved. It's always good to get into the habit of clicking Command S every 10 or so changes you make in the project. Just do it more often than not. You never know when sometimes technology craps out on you. Um, if you wanted to add text to your footage, you're going to hover over to this T, which means the type tool, text tool. You're going to click on that. Click on the space up here that you want your text to show. And you're gonna start writing what you want it to be. So highlighting it, you're gonna go over into this effects panel here. 
and make sure you are working in text. So here's tutorial. This is the word that I just wrote. I'm going to bring that down and you can actually change the font. You can change the color. You can change the spacing. You could change the size. And that is how you start enabling the text. All right, so say you're done editing. You wanna create a endpoint on your video and an out point on your video. And just so you know, I actually moved clip to clip by clicking my arrow keys. And um, so once you make your in and out point on the video, you know what, let me go ahead and make a cross dissolve here. So I'm gonna right click the end of that clip, apply transitions, you're automatically gonna be defaulted to a cross dissolve. Same for the end, apply decisions, automatically going to have a cross dissolve. Before we export, you wanna render your video clips. And you're gonna do that by clicking sequence, render into out. It's going to process the rendering of your video. It'll just make a smoother, faster export for you. Also, if your video gets very long, um, there's a lot of different effects happening at once. It's going to make it a much easier viewing process for you too. So now that that's created, we're going to export your video because you are all done and ready to share it with the world. All right, so to export, you're going to click File, Export Your Video, Media. You want to make sure your format is in H.264. And then you're going to click on Preset. There is a YouTube preset for you, so it'll just make it so easy to export your video. Um, if you wanted to create custom settings, you can. But for this video to get started, let's go ahead and click YouTube. You're going to make sure the name is exactly where you want it to be and that it's being saved exactly where you want it to be. So we just expanded that. I'm saving it in my tutorial fol folder. Yes, save. And you're going to go ahead and click export. All right, and there it is. So I hope this video was helpful. Video editing is definitely a process. You have to create a lot of muscle memory to become really quick and fast at editing, um, but just have so much fun with it. It is such a joy to get into. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get to them as uh, quickly as I can. Um, and do not forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video if you found it helpful and uh, we will see you again next time.